Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today we are playing Pokemon Ditto Edition. Now I've played this in the past but I never completed it so I wanted to put that right today. Starting things off it basically tells you if you lose a single battle then it is game over so you have to save frequently. We are then introduced to Daito the character that we're going to be playing as in this game. This is of course his human form we are a ditto in disguise and then on the way to work this guy is in the way and we see him transform into a Tyrogue so he's got an item that allows him to transform into other Pokemon the way to transform into other Pokemon is actually really cool in this game but we'll get into that in a second we then see the Tyrogue enter this jewelry shop and then we're just going up behind him and we're like, right, what was we going to that jewelry shop for? Like, what's the crack with this guy? You know, I don't know what he's doing, so I'm going to follow him. And then we actually see him robbing the jewelry shop. He's like, give me all your jewels. And then we go up to him. We're like, look, I saw you transform. What's going on? And then he's like, oh, no, he saw me. So I think he was just trying to transform so he could just rob the place and then obviously transform back into a human and no one would know better. He then takes me outside and we start fighting. I become a ditto, which isn't a great fight because now I'm a normal type and he's a fighting type. And then we start battling, he starts punching me and stuff, and I'm like, bro, what's your problem? And then this guy swoops in from nowhere, and he's like, yo, take this strange belt, and then he allows me to then transform into other Pokemon. Doesn't matter who he is, he just drops in, and then pops off, and then he gives us three strange items as well. And this allows us to transform into one of the Johto starters. So we have the green one, we have the red one, and we have the blue one. Playing this in the past, I already knew that that was the Johto starters. But I guess if this is the first time you played it, you wouldn't really know. Anyway, I choose the blue one because Totodile, I think, is probably just the best option for this. Um, we are level 10 as well. The thing about this game as well is if you learn moves it's only for that specific Pokemon, so your move pools are going to be like all over the place. Anyway, we take out the guy, he drops the Tyro Charger, so now we are also able to change into a Tyrogue, so we can become a Cyndaquil, a Chikorita, and a Totodile, and now also a Tyrogue as well. He's just chilling on the ground as well. Anyway, this girl comes down, she's just a colleague from work, she's like, look, hurry up, you're going to lose your job if you don't get to the game corner stat, so we have to then go to the game corner and start doing our shift. I have to go and collect a bunch of coins, didn't even know that was a job in the game corner, don't remember that in Celadon but either way uh, we then talk to him as well I think you can get a game corner coin case but no idea what that is we then go to this couple this guy turns into a lackid so knowing that I'm gonna have to battle him later I have to go buy some potions because there's no Pokemon centers or anything like that in this game you just can only heal with random people that heal you in like the the kind of hotels as you can see right now and then obviously healing items and money is very scarce in this game as well so you kind of have to use all of your items very very well you don't want to drop them all in the first couple of battles because then the later battles become very very difficult anyway we finish off in the hotel and we go to the elected guy and then this is this strange character here as well just out of nowhere all these different characters popping up and they're just kind of talking about uh, meta changes and he's just kind of picking a fight and stuff and then uh, he sees that i've got the belt and elected he's like look what's going on here brings out a pouring on and i'm like bro what is going on and then like it turns around and he's like i'm gonna fight you first and i'm gonna take out this pouring on and steal everybody's meta changes so i have to then fight an elected as you can see though i'm now a chikorita because during the battle i obviously changed and stuff you can change mid fight and before fight as well which is quite nice i have razor leaf I didn't want to become a total now, knowing that I was going to fight an elected, so that's why I changed that. He's got low kick, he's got all these different moves. I raise the leaf again, though, and do take out the elected, which is pretty nice. But because this game is very difficult, I also have to then take on this Porygon. Without healing in between or anything like that, as I say, this game is actually very, very difficult. So he then sends out a level 12 of Porygon. I'm level 11, and I'm at half HP. Luckily, I have Poison Powder. He Psybeams me. If this Poison Powder missed, I would have lost the whole thing. Psybeam, as you can see, is doing way too much damage, but luckily the Poison Powder does take out the the, uh, the Porygon. I also learned Synthesis as well, which is a very, very nice move to have in this game because, as I said, potions, very, very scarce. I need a reliable way of healing, and that's exactly what I've just got because I can go into like a wild battle and then just Synthesis all my health back, and that's kind of what I do later on in the game because I, I just don't have the money to keep going back to the hotel to kind of get my HP back. Anyway, this guy comes over. He's talking about his relationship problems, whatever. Not too bothered about that. I go back over to work. We've got this girl here uh, just basically talking about uh, some random gang that's been popping up quite frequently in this sort of cave, which is on the right. He's also talking about a Kadabra that robbed the game corner. So obviously that's someone else using a meta changer. And then there's like 40 different meta changers you can get in this game. So there's actually quite a big variety of Pokemon, which is pretty cool. Um, anyway, they're just talking about this cave and stuff and that I should go after them and all that. I don't think she knows that I am a Ditto. I think this is just very much my own personal secret. They're then talking about whether they should 
should call the police or not. And then I'm just like, nah, I'll definitely help. I'll go pop over there. And this guy is just like, time for me to help out as well. This Giovanni looking guy, he's just super mysterious. And he's just popping up in all these different locations. Um, but anyway, she's just talking about the plans and stuff and that we're too, feet, uh, too weak to do it and all that. I'm like, bro, I got this. It's a normal Sunday for me. So after that, I run to the cave. And then there's just a bunch of different battles that are in here. Like, this is quite a... This is quite a hefty part of the game because there's a lot of battles here. And of course, if you lose a single battle, it's game over. So you have to keep saving. Otherwise, you're just going to lose all your progress. I then go up to this guy and start fighting him. And as you can see, the levels are still pretty uh, pretty high. Like, I'm level 12, but I'm only one Pokemon. He's got a level 11 Cubone. And then he's also got another Pokemon behind that as well. And as I said, there's no Pokemon centers. So every bit of damage that I take is actually making the game even worse for me. And I've not got that many potions. I think I've got like three or four super potions because I have to use a couple of them on the Porygon fight because that alone was one of the toughest battles already in the game. Uh, so we then start taking out all these different characters. I find a rare candy, which is very, very nice, which I'm just going to use later on, like maybe before the final battle or something. And then fight this girl here. Again, just trying to get as much XP as I possibly can. She sends out a skitty. So I don't mind getting all this XP and stuff like that because it's, it's very, very useful. I'm just being a little bit worried about the potions and everything. Anyway, we also find a hyper potion talking about potions. And there's all these different battles. As you can see, there's bikers everywhere, but there's also items everywhere. Heart scale, also very, very useful for this game as well. I believe it allows you to um, remember different moves and stuff. Anyway, this guy's over here. Luckily, he ain't got anything ridiculous. He's, he's basically like an XP guy. He just sends out this level 15 Abra with only teleport. So obviously, that's just free XP. And that'll get me up to level 14 as well, which of course... I'm very happy about. Anytime I can get free XP, you know, I'm straight up there. I'm knocking on the door. I'm introducing myself. I'm getting all of that free stuff. We then have to fight this guy here. This was quite a tough battle, I do believe. He had three Mons here. Uh, he did send out a Kakuna, though, which wasn't too bad. But he also had a Beedrill and everything. Not a great fight for my Grass type. But luckily, we take all those out. I'm now level 15. I go down here. I find another item. It's an Abra Changer. So I also have a Abra Meta Changer now, which isn't too good because, obviously, he's only going to have Teleport. And he only learns Confusion at level 16 when, obviously, it becomes a Kadabra. So not the greatest item to find. I kind of need some better meta changes than that. We then fight this girl here who has a Carnivine, which again, not great for me. I can tackle it. I can poison powder and stuff though. I should really at this point have held the different meta changer just in case I do go into these kind of fights because it just allows you to basically have two Pokemon at once. Um, but anyway, Hyper Potion there, which was very, very nice. And then there's more battles, as you can see. These girls, these bikers, they have got really, really good teams. Anyway, we start battling her next. Nightshade, Gang, Fujo. She's sending out Pachirisus. Again, Paralysis is even worse because I have nothing for kind of like uh, status effects. I have to literally go back to the hotel and heal because I don't have anything. Next up, I'm trying to learn Reflect, which is obviously very, very useful. I decide to get rid of uh, Tackle just simply because it's not really going to be that useful. And I've got Razor Leaf as well. And I can't get rid of Poison Powder because any tough boss battles I need uh, the best moves for. Anyway, exiting the cave. I've now got quite a bit of Moolah, so I can buy some potions but we got another boss battle coming up and this girl is blocking the entrance and she's like a mini boss battle to the big boss battle that's coming up but anyway she's basically saying you know you're not getting through yet unless you beat me all that stuff and she's like it gives me a chance to beat you down so i have to start battling her and she also has this elected meta changer so i don't know why they're giving these out away. I think it was buy one, get one free or something. These are popping up everywhere. So it's another Elected. It's level 17 this time, though. Plus, I'm accidentally into uh, Totodile. Again, I just was switching between them in all those battles and stuff just so I had to use the littlest amount of uh, healing items and all that. But anyway, as you can see, I transform into Chikorita. Try use Water Gun because I have to use the, the move of the last Pokemon that was in. I'm just trying to figure out what to do here because I don't know how much damage this thing's going to be doing to me. But luckily, though, I do get a crit on the Razor Leaf. And then he Thunder Shocks me. Uh, obviously not very effective. Does paralyze me, though, which isn't great. And then I, of course, get the RNG of being paralyzed. And then I'm just hoping that and praying that the game isn't going to RNG me out of this battle because I don't think I'd saved it for a while. I couldn't remember. Anyway, I take out the Elected. I'm now level 18. And she's basically just saying, oh, done. You're really strong, bloody hell. And then she gives me the Elected Changer. So that's really nice. Another Meta Changer to add to the collection. Really, really happy about that. And then after that, she just disappears. I go and collect the item, and then I go into this shop here. And then this dude, this mysterious guy from earlier, is in this, what looks to be a bike shop, even though it's on the top of a cave. Not really sure what's going on. So anyway, I'm talking to this guy, and then out of nowhere, 
Tweedledee and Tweedledum pop up. And I'm like, oh no, what is this battle going to be? And this is a really, really tough battle. And I actually lose this battle, but of course I, I just saved it before so I can always restart. Uh, but yeah, basically they're just talking about the idea and the meta changes and stuff. And they become a Kadabra and a Porygon. I was already struggling on Porygon earlier, but now there's a Kadabra to deal with as well. Um, and of course, you can't evolve in this game. Like, I'm obviously still a, a Chikorita, uh, even though I'm level 18. So anyway, Mishan comes out, who is the other guy. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I just lose the fight. Although not even close to winning, which was a bit unfortunate. Um, there's just not... I just wasn't prepared for that fight at all. So what I do is I restart back to my previous save and get straight back into the battle. Um, as you can see, take out the Kadabra um, and get some nice XP. And then it's just Porygon left, because Kadabra was just doing way too much damage. I think, he, I think that Mishan HP is just like one confusion it was actually doing way too much uh so i decided to hyper potion up my q bone uh, just because i didn't want to lose this fight as you can see my potions are already uh dwindling down i don't have a ton left uh, and as you can see side beam doing quite a bit of damage but when there's that paired with uh, Kadabra, it could literally one shot me any uh, with anything on uh, turn one but we do take out the porygon we do take out another boss battle which i was very very happy about because as i say we just got absolutely destroyed in the previous battle so they disappear um, they're just like, I don't know, everyone just drops their meta changes, I don't know what's going on there, but I get a Kadabra change, which is very, very nice, um, and then I believe that they also drop the Pori changer as well, so that's two other options that I can now, uh, make my Pokemon as, and Kadabra is a good option, but at the same time, very, very frail, does hit very hard, but I feel like you need bulkier Pokemon in this game, just simply because of the lack of items and stuff. Anyway, they're talking about meta changes and that this mysterious guy gave them to me. And then he's basically just like, okay, we need to find this mysterious guy. And then this Nightshade gang just kind of disappears. They just teleport off into, I don't know, the abyss, whatever. Um, and anyway, we've got Mishu here just saying, you know, what a pain. We stopped and got the meta changes at least. We're just trying to collect them all at this point and basically put an end to it. So after that, I leave the cave. And then there is the uh, the girl, my colleague, and then also this random scientist has just randomly joined the, the team. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, but anyway, this is Ada, and basically he can kind of evolve meta changes if it's at the appropriate level. I also find a Growlithe changer in their lab as well. So yeah, because my Pokemon is level 18, Chikorita can, of course, evolve into the Bayleaf meta changer. So yeah, as soon as the level... Um, is appropriate, you can then evolve your, your previous meta changes, which is obviously really nice. So I could have evolved like Abra as well if I wanted to, but I've already got a Kadabra one, so there's not much point. So yeah, this is the part where he's just telling me that I can upgrade my meta changes. So as you can see, I've got like all of these different ones as well, like the Elected one and the Cubone one and stuff like that, but you have to be uh, the correct level um, just with one of your Pokemon. Anyway, we go back to the, the Poker Market, get some more potions, and then just kind of wander around a bit. I need to go heal as well at the hotel. It goes up to 400 now as well. I think the further you get into the game, the more expensive it gets. Anyway, I need to go over to this island uh, um, because apparently that is where the guy exists that created the Meta Changer. And as you can see, uh, we do have a Nurse Joy uh, at the front of the island, which is very nice. But there was a bit of a glitch on this island where wild encounters weren't a thing. Like, I couldn't grind up levels, which made the game even worse. Uh, not worse, but like more difficult. So the only Pokemon that I could grind up on were these random characters. Anyway, I thought this was a really cool Easter egg as well. We basically have to defeat the guy that created uh, the brain uh, training thing, that, D that the DS game. It has a really tough team as well, by the way. I only just managed to get through it. Uh, but he actually gives me the Solosis uh, meta changer as well, which I was very happy about because pretty bulky mon, pretty bulky mon, can't, can't complain. Uh, but yeah, I really like that Easter egg there. I thought it was really cool. So anyway, we, d we take out this guy and he's just telling me about the... the basically the backstory and stuff of what he does anyway we find this sneasel in front of this cave and this was a horrible battle this game gets so much more difficult than you think um so we have to take out this sneasel it's level 20 i go in with mishan of course i do have two pokemon on my team now as well because he joined my team um when we did defeat the cadaver and the porygon but as you can see just doing hella damage to me way too much for my liking he's over leveled as well he's level 20 sneasel doing all the damage under the sun so i get a few water guns off and stuff but unfortunately mishan does faint i can bring in the big guns though which is of course uh daito the level 19 getting a little bit higher but of course i'm not a fan of having a grass type against an ice type his faint attack does so much hp which is just ridiculous then he goes for agility so i'm like oh, yes finally rng has gone my way sneasel has decided to go for a move that has not helped him out at all. And then he turns back into a human. I get the Sneasel changer. And then he's like, you're strong. 
but now let me use my actual Pokemon. So he's actually turned into a Sneasel, and he's also got a backup team. And as you know, because there's no healing in between battles, I now have a level 10 Bayleaf against this guy with an extra three Pokemon. And they've got Bite and everything that are still high leveled. I get a Reflect up just simply because Bite is going to be doing a lot less damage. They go for a Howl, which isn't too bad. I do have time now to heal up and everything like that. But unfortunately, he also has a Mightyena that's level 19 for whatever reason. Uh, and I'm just like, how am I going to get past a Sneasel and a Mightyena? I need a good fighting type Pokemon. But for whatever reason, Tyro's... Tyro just doesn't evolve, even though I'm level 20, I don't get Hitmonchan or Hitmonlee or anything, because that was my original plan, because I'm level 20, I can basically evolve, but unfortunately that wasn't the case, so I have to go back to him after using my rare candy and stuff, getting them to level 20, because like I say, you, you can only grind up in the first area, but they've got like level 4s, so it's not really helping much. I decided to lead with my Quilava though, just simply because with a Flame Charge, he's going to be doing a lot more damage against Sneasel. Not a fan of him hitting 4 times there, but anyway, I get my Flame Wheel off, takes out the Sneasel, very happy to see that, happy, happy days. So now we have 2 Mons, one and a half kind of HP bars to take out the uh, the Tupu Chiena and the Mightyena. The Mightyena also has Intimidate as well, if you didn't think the game was already too difficult. So he sends out the Puchiena, I send out Mishan, my Quilava, and I go for a Flame Wheel. This thing is doing hefty damage. I mean, I know it was a crit, but I don't think that mattered. Like, Quilava, where have you been all my life? I, this is the first time I'd used Quilava or Cyndaquil in this game, and I don't know why, because they are just ridiculously strong. Um, so they do go for the bite there, which is a bit unfortunate, but I get two flame wheels off, take out the two Puchianas, and then I've got Mightyena left, and I've got two Pogon, which is very, very nice. I decide to go into Daito because I don't want to be uh, having an Intimidate on my Quilava. Also, I can get Reflex up and stuff, and maybe Poison Powder the Mightyena and all that good stuff. I go for a Reflect, he goes for a bite, um, we do get the Reflect up, so obviously very, very nice because now his attacks are going to be doing half damage. I try and get a Poison Powder off as well. In a perfect world, I don't get flinched there, but of course, as a Pokemon half RNG, half skill, so I decided to heal up Daito, because I feel like this Poison Powder is going to do really, really good things for me, because even though if like he's flinching me and stuff, it's still going to be whittling, like, whittling away his HP. I then bloody miss the Poison Powder, which, again, is just always going to happen. He goes for the bite, he goes for the bite again, and I get the Poison Powder off, finally, third time lucky, even though Daito, unfortunately, is going to uh, to die here. And also the Reflect fades as well, which was a bit unfortunate. Um, so I'm like, okay, maybe I Super Potion instead. Can't be letting Daito die. I can take these bites after the Reflects and stuff. I just, I don't know, looking back on it, he gets a high roll, obviously not helping me out in the slightest. So I think at this point, I'm like, screw it. Let me just try and get a heal off. But yeah, he just gets another. I don't even think that mattered. I don't think that high roll was a second attack. But either way, not great. So now we've got to come in with Mishan, who's got 27 HP left. I've got three Super Potions and a Revive. So again, the item's getting a little bit scarce, but I decided to heal all the way up. He goes for the bite. Of course, there's no reflect up, but he's only doing 14 HP. And I was thinking, how is Kolava tanking that so much more than Bayleaf? Like, I thought Bayleaf was relatively bulky. Um, but either way, we do manage to take out the Mightyena with Quilava, which again was a very, very tough battle. And again, it took a couple of attempts, but uh, we finally got there. And then this guy disappears out the cave and remember this was just the outside of the cave and i'm thinking at this point dude if that's outside the cave what's going to be inside the cave of course it is a ton of trainers which at this time like i'm kind of happy about because it is the only way to grind up and they've got some pretty good levels in there as well like i'm level 19 and 21 so i need all the xp i can get because as you can see the game just gets more and more difficult so i'm just grinding up on these trainers really just happy that i get all this xp and luckily it's like beautifly isn't really a tough pokemon to beat but it does give you a lot of xp stun spore is a bit annoying like getting paralyzed as i say i've got no full heals and stuff anyway we fight all the trainers and we make it to this guy here this dude with a random hat on he's called plaga plaga i don't really know how to pronounce his name but either way he's talk talking about meta changes and how they're good and he's saying that his body's weak and feeble basically the meta changes i'm giving him a new I guess, form of life. He then turns into a Heracross, and I'm like, oh no, I don't want to be taken on a Heracross at all. Um, but for whatever reason, he just disappears, and he says that he's going to be at Pebble Island. So I have to go all the way to Pebble Island to basically stop this guy and get the Heracross changer, I guess, and just stop him from doing all this stuff. I then go outside, but there's nothing here. I don't really know what this point of the game was. Anyway, go back to the sailor. I'm like, bro, I need to go to Pebble Island. I'm sorry. I'm just taking up all your time. As you can see, there's another Nurse Joy here. So that's good for healing, although it does cost like six, 800 now, something like that. Uh, there is, again, patches of grass, but for whatever reason, there's no wild Pokemon. You cannot grind up on them here, which, again, really, really unfortunate. The only way you can grind is from random trainer battles. We then find our way into this building here, find a 
nice Heracross changer. And I'm thinking to myself, I thought I would have had to fight the boss to do that. And then there's a few trainers here in the way of the boss. Um, and they are quite difficult to beat as well. They've got gold bats and stuff, which of course is... It's not like awful, but they do kind of stack up the amount of damage and stuff they're doing to you. Also level 22 as well. Like every time you get to a new location, you're under leveled and you can't level up without taking on the trainers. But of course, you can't keep losing to the trainers because then the game's over. So as you can see, you can see the predicament of the game. But we do get a few all of the trainers and get quite a bit of XP, which is very nice. I, I At this point, I'm like saving after every single battle. Um, and then I find these three strength boulders and I'm like, bro, where the hell do you get strength? I also find the pincer changer as well, so I'm thinking to myself, oh, maybe I have to uh, switch to pincer and then I can get like strength as a move or something like that. And I actually was wandering around for ages, wondering where I actually go. And I finally come back after like 10 minutes and then there's these machines that you have to break and I'm like, ah, oh, bro, that's so annoying because <laughs> I was literally running around for ages. I was using pincer, I was using heracross, going through all these different move pools and stuff to try and find like which Pokemon had strength. But yeah, you just have to basically punch all the machines. So yeah, the rock wall disappears. There's another couple of trainers, which isn't great because again, we're starting to we're starting to get a little bit more difficult here with with the game. As you can see, I just spent a lot more money on potions as well. I'm down to 584. He's basically saying these are the last members of the Nightshade gang. You have to get through these guys to get to the final boss. Uh, this guy was quite annoying. He did have like Diglett, Diglett, and Dugtrio or something, which again is annoying with like sucker punches and because they're so fast. I'm just taking extra damage for no reason. Um, they must have had a different Pokemon actually because they poisoned me. But either way, can't remember. I recorded this ages ago. Next up, we've got this guy to battle, and this this guy was a little bit of a problem. Uh, he does have a Lucario, and I didn't currently have my Quilava Meta Changer on, which, again, would have been fine if I did. I did actually change to a Heracross, though, trying to get strength, like I said before. But we go into Heracross. Uh, he goes for the counter as well, which is quite interesting. We do take him out with, like, a Brick Break, though. And then we move on to this room here, and then we start talking to this masked guy with the hat, basically just saying, you know, congratulations on clearing out the whole place. Th this was really weird. Like, he just basically made us so we couldn't be using our meta changes and then it was like all right we're just gonna fight like this that didn't go too well and then he turns into this alternate form and this is some weird ass looking what's going on with his hands first of all i don't know he's kind of turned into the thing or something but anyway he brings out his own ditto that's level 27 and he meta changes into this bird I don't know what it is. It's like a ho -O mixed with, uh, I don't know, Moltres maybe. Either way, War Gun doing no damage to it at all. And uh, basically, we actually get quite close to defeating it. Um, but unfortunately, it does Destiny Bond me, um, which isn't great because then Destiny Bond just destroys me. <laughs> you lose the battle. So I get the break break off. I kill the Pokemon, but then the Destiny Bond takes me with it, which is really, really unfortunate. So I have to restart because unfortunately... Even though I technically won the battle, I, I also didn't because I also lost my Pokemon, which was, again, a little bit annoying. So we go back into the battle. I have to reset. Got to heal up my uh, Heracross. All that good stuff. As you can see, it lived on, like, 1 HP, which was really, really annoying. But, um, yeah, it's just trying to go for different moves and stuff. If it goes for a Destiny Bond at this point, it's okay because I still have my other Ditto fine um, and Dandy. So, yeah, I can just take this thing out. I also got the Leftovers as well, which was very, very nice. I think I picked them up somewhere. Um, so as you can see, just these these items are very, very useful. It then goes for a sludge, gets a poison. I aerial ace, take out this weird ass looking Pokemon. No idea what it was. And we defeat Plaga, the random third character in this game. And then Plaga basically joins our team as well, which is really good. So this isn't even the final boss. So this is what I got to like the last time I played the game, like five years ago or whatever. It probably wasn't that long, like three years ago. Uh, this is what I got to. Um, but I think they finished the game since then. So anyway, Plaga joins the team and that wasn't the final boss. So I have to go to High Flyer Island. Let's go over there and we basically have to fight the final boss there. So we also get a different kind of ship as well. Like the other place just doesn't go to it. He also says this is the last place you can go you can't go back so you need all your items and stuff so I basically just go to the market buy as much as i can see if there's any other meta changes that can kind of evolve um even though i'm pretty happy with the team that i've got right now uh, i i do actually get the electables though which was quite a nice upgrade from a lekid and we make our way to high flyer island it's raining didn't bring my umbrella not happy about it but that's okay as you can see the boat's just gone he just leaves us here uh we then have this shrine where if i touch it, it just gives us hope i, I don't know i I'd bloody need it because uh, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about this final boss there's nothing else here on this island it's just me this building the shrine i decide to save it the, like i say the, the captain of the ship he's gone no idea he's just dropped me off here we then start climbing the tower and i have to fight this guy here who has the tyro because this was the original kind of like evil guy so i'm thinking to myself at this point oh damn i might have to fight every single boss on the way up to the final boss which i thought would have been a really cool way to kind of um 
I guess, end of the game. That's not the case, though. This is just the only guy you have to fight on the way to the final boss, which, again, was a little bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. As you can see, I've got Electables here. I've got Thunder Wave, really, really nice. I take out the Tyrogue. I do get to level 24 as well on Daito, which, again, also very, very nice. Uh, we then beat him. He just disappears. I don't know where they're teleporting to. We then make our way to the final stairs, and the, basically, the game's saying the final fight, you can't you make sure everything's ready. You can't go back, all this. So I decide to save it. And I go up the stairs to see what the final boss is going to be. And it's this random police guy. Not seen him at all before. And he's basically... He's just some evil dude. And he's just talking about his sister. Like they hunted his sister or something. And he's just saying that he's going to destroy us. All this and that. Uh, just a random NPC, really. <laughs> I don't really understand. But turns into a bloody Rayquaza. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> How am I going to beat a Rayquaza? I thought this is like, this is ridiculous. I can't go back. I'm forever stuck here. So the Rayquaza comes in. It's level 30. I've got three Pokemon. Uh, they're all at level 24, 25. So as you can see, we're in a bit of a predicament here. I do go for a Thunder Wave as it goes for a Crunch. Crunch does hella damage. I do go for the, th the Thunder Wave, though. I get the Paralysis up, which was really nice. I then think to myself, this is the only Pokemon I have that can really hit it for neutral damage, so I probably have to keep that alive. I then go into Heracross, but it has Rest, which is really, really annoying, because basically paral I, the Paralysis was... It, like It went for Rest, but obviously because it failed i don't know why it just I, I don't, can you not use rest on full health i always thought you could but either way the process doesn't go obviously so i use this turn to heal up my other pokemon get that super potion straight on electables because i feel like that is going to be my win condition goes for a crunch luckily it is resisted this is the start of the time where i'm thinking maybe i counter it something like that goes for rest again uh it says obviously the rayquaza's hp is full i go for the counter doesn't happen because obviously it didn't hit me uh, I get some more leftovers. It was a really nice turn. I then go for the Aerial Ace. He goes for the rest, which obviously does work this time. So he's not paralyzed no more, which is really, really unfortunate. I just think that I've got nothing in my team that can do enough damage to warrant the rest every single turn. Like I've got Aerial Ace, which again is doing like an eighth of its HP. Um, so obviously if it's just going to rest again, it just makes all of the, these Aerial Aces pointless. I go for another counter because I, obviously I knew he was going to wake up that turn. Um, but of course he goes for the scary face. I, I feel at this point like... I just want him to crunch me because it's like the only physical move that he has, but he's just not going for it. It's like he knows what I'm trying to do. Um, so yeah, counter's not working at all, which again, isn't great. And he also has Hyper Voice. Now, Hyper Voice does hella damage. I know that was a crit, but still, Hyper Voice from a Rayquaza is still going to be doing a lot of damage. So this is where the game, again, gets really even more tough, to be fair. Like, the game's already really difficult. As you can see, he rests all the HP back. I'm stuck Aerial Acing. At this point, I'm like, this isn't going to work. I have to switch out. So I have to think, like, which Pokemon can really do any damage to it at all. So I go into Daito, the Electabuzz, just thinking, like, it is neutral damage. It, it might do a little bit. Um, looking at my moves, like, I don't know, maybe Electro Ball, because it doesn't really matter. Shockwave I go for, though, and it does about the same as Aerial Ace. He goes for another Rest. Again, this is just this is just the battle that we're in right now. He loves a Rest. He loves snoozing. He loves a Sleep. Uh, the Shockwave damage is going to kind of... Total a little bit here though. I'm getting through him. I'm getting through him. You know, that's a good cool, that's a good bit of health going there. We shockwave again. We're into yellow now. We're into yellow bar. Rayquaza's scary face in me. I'm a little bit worried. I'm a little bit scared. More of the rest than the scary face though. And I think one more shockwave and we can get through this battle. I go for it. It lives on one. Cannot believe my luck. Then he goes for rest. Oh man, this was annoying. At this point, I thought maybe I just restart and then I change my like meta changes around or something like that because i don't know what move i can really go for because i did have a croconaw meta changer with ice fang and i'm thinking if i just restart i'll just be right before the battle and then i can just ice fang away and it'll be fine he goes for the hyper voice which does a lot of damage i go for another shockwave i get a big fat crit and at this point i'm like oh my god please he crunches me and i get the paralysis off because of my static so at this point i know that i've won because He's not going to be able to outspeed me. I should just easily be able to come in with my Pokemon with Plaga, who I still haven't even meta changed yet. <laughs> so he turns into a lava. Again, if I had Croconaw, it would have been absolutely fine because of Ice Fang. But we do take out the Rayquaza. I get 1100 XP. And then the Rayquaza is like, oh no, bloody hell, what's going on? And then he's just saying, I can't believe it. it was bested by three Ditto. And then that's it. That's it. I don't know what happens there. I think we're just forever stuck on this tower i don't know what's going on really but either way that is pokemon ditto edition if you enjoyed drop a like leave a comment thank you for watching and until next time have a great day and peace